Hi everybody. In this video, we're going to look at how we can pack together all of our disparate UVs from all of the different elements that we have. Now, what I would like to do with this model, and what I think is generally valuable with a lot of modular pieces of this nature, is to combine it all into a single texture sheet. The reason being, if we use this mesh multiple times in a scene, but actually have it being multiple different textures, what will happen is our draw calls in our scene will go up to unreasonable levels. And the thing we want to avoid in a lot of game engines is too many draw calls. So by keeping this all within one texture sheet, it may mean we have a larger texture than normal, but a lot less draw calls. There's some drawbacks in these kind of methods, but in this case, this is the limit that I want to stick to. Now, what we can see here right now is I've got a whole bunch of different, let's just pull this over, a whole bunch of different UVs all set up. Each part is basically going to be in its own little unwrap section. You can see here, each little part is off in its own disparate area. The reason that I have this done is because basically I could just go through each and every single object by itself and not get too caught up in what the structure was or how these things were going. Basically just anything that I wanted to be there is there and anything that I didn't want to be there is deleted. So any mesh that exists here that should have an unwrap exists and stays. If I didn't want there to be an alternate side to this mesh, it would be deleted and I would make sure it's not there. I don't like doing work twice if I don't have to. So basically I would just unwrap whatever I had and I would simply make sure that it was, as we were doing in the previous example, rescaled and I would simply pack it together. And then I would just pull it off to the side. The reason that I do this is now I can collapse this and attach all of these different meshes together. So once they're all attached together, I can pack them. And I can start to just drop in my unwrap modifier, open my UV panel, and the nice little surprise that I get is the fact that pretty much everything is all in its own unique little island. I can scroll over everything else and say, rescale elements and they'll be rescaled in conjunction with one another. This is incredibly powerful to work with because it means that whatever I have here is going to work together quite a bit better than it might have otherwise. A couple of pieces here are overlapping which is not a big deal. Just pull this over, pull this over. These are going to have to start going together anyways so it's not a big loss to start having to reorganize them already. But the reason that I like to have this kind of set up the way that it is, is if I just repack these things together, I can start to see how each part might fit together. So again, I could pack these together. Let's just make sure that they are all rescaled to fit. Good. And basically, this can just start allowing me to work with chunks of geometry. Uh, the reason that I think this is useful is because mentally speaking it means you don't have to look at so many different pieces and try to figure out how they go together but instead looking at larger chunks of elements and start seeing how they go together it means that you can get the best size possible out of your component parts again in this place I'm not really thinking too hard about um, the orientation of them or, or what goes with where basically just naturally speaking each part will be close to itself. So if you're texturing inside Photoshop, all of your component pieces that are actually supposed to go together automatically go together. You don't have to repack them or think about it too hard, which means that you can kind of just focus on dealing with the puzzle of fitting all this stuff as closely together as possible and not get caught up in the puzzle of trying to think about the logic of when you try to texture this in Photoshop, are you going to be able to think about where each thing is located in conjunction with one another? This I find is, is really, really useful for making the unwrapping process a little less unpleasant and a little bit more pleasurable um, because otherwise uh, unwrapping can get um, pretty tedious and, and hard to think through. So in this case, for example, you'll start to see I'm running into a situation where now 
everything's kind of fitting pretty decently. If I start to rotate some of these pieces, I can probably get them lined up uh, underneath each other in some order like this and fit this somewhere in like this. And basically what I would end up doing is if I'm starting to find that my space is a little bit empty, I will take everything and I will scale it all up a little bit more. This means that now I have to kind of start repacking, start trying to figure out, okay, well now, how am I going to fit all this stuff into this new space? How am I going to make better use of that empty area that I had before? Uh, because in my opinion, where this stuff goes doesn't really matter. Its orientation does, especially if you're texturing inside of uh, Photoshop. If you're using something like Substance Designer or Substance Painter, uh, orientation of those things is not nearly as important. Uh, but I'll always try to find little sections where these kind of pieces can go because they can start to get really in the way if they're too close to the rest of the uh, geometry that you're working with. So let's just start to try to pull some of these pieces around a little bit more. Fit these elements over here. Maybe slide these pieces together. Or do something like this. I think that'll fit in pretty decently right there. I can pull this over a little bit more. Same with these pieces. These guys here don't really matter. They're not hugely, hugely important. They can certainly be rotated and adjusted to just minimize uh, how much space they're taking up. But again, you'll notice too that all of my shapes are pretty much straight lines as much as possible because that's just going to pack into a square space a lot better than anything else. Let's see what we're working with here. Oh, so in this case, of course, I did forget that this piece was in here, uh, and everything may not have been rescaled with it. So if that happens, it's perfectly fine. You can see that this scales down just a little bit. So in this case, I'm just going to remember that size difference and scale it down just ever so slightly. Select everything again. Scale down. Almost no change happens, so they are equal with each other. Uh, let's just pack those together again and see if this will fit. In this case now that may may mean that I actually just need to scale this back down a little bit more to start finding how to fit this in. And you're always going to end up in a spot where things don't quite fit. So you'll be trying to figure out how this could fit into these empty little spaces and then trying to figure out how you can start to incorporate in these missing pieces because at some point all of them can fit. It's just a matter of trying to figure out how to get that working as closely as possible and I find using these into ch like grouping these into chunks helps make that happen a little bit easier because you can kind of just grab at big areas and start to adjust them. Now again the more you try to group this uh, for the purposes of making it easy to texture inside Photoshop which is incredibly important um, the more you try to do that, the harder it is to pack, of course, uh, because you can't just kind of realign things and just put them wherever they fit. Uh, but if you start using something like Substance, you're going to be in a situation where you can texture things much, much easier um, because you can also just pack in ways that maybe doesn't necessarily always have to work or be logical or have an order to it. You can just start to pack things just so that it fits. So let's just flip this upside down. Yeah, upside down in this way and oops, upside down again. So we'll try to do something like that. That works pretty decently. Um, because of the sculpt that we did, I can't reuse this side, so it'll just have to fit in here uh, pretty tightly. Let's pull that over. And all of that stuff's going in pretty decently. Now you'll notice this actually doesn't take that long to do. Um, the fact of the matter is, is because we're dealing with these big component groups, we're not actually having to unwrap individual singular pieces. We're basically able to unwrap large chunks of sections instead of simply dealing with everything as its own individual little piece. Um, and there we go. We're actually packed together pretty tightly. Um, and it's actually still pretty manageable to texture this uh, if you were using Photoshop instead of using something like Substance. We've still got actually a pretty big space here. We could pack this probably still quite a bit tighter than before. One thing I do recommend is even in situations like this, always try to keep some logic to it. Um, so for example, I could probably still fit this piece over here instead. 
And I would say, in some cases, a little bit of scaling of individual elements does not hurt too much. It just depends on how much you do it. So for example, this piece here is a once in a while usage. So I may scale it down just a bit more so that these pieces can fit together a little bit better. But again, a lot of this is just some fine tune adjustments. You can use the checkerboard, let's just pull this over. You can use the checkerboard from text tools to also help yourself figure out what the alignment and orientation of elements are. So for example, this was flipped in multiple different directions. Uh, so you wanna be aware of that so that you know exactly where this stuff should be going, uh, especially if you were using Photoshop. So again, with those empty spaces, my opinion would be scale it up a little bit more and then start to try to refit all of these things together. So let's just jump ahead a little bit. Basically, this could be done, but let's jump ahead and take a quick look at what my finished result is otherwise. So this is the unwrap that I did separately offline. And basically, you can see there's just a little bit more thoughtfulness to where certain elements go. So for example, this piece is towards the bottom and is appropriately uh, oriented with each other. Uh, the same goes for this piece as well most of the important parts are there. This section here, for example, has a little bit more logical orientation and structure to it. The same goes for the location of these pieces, and all of these pieces also go together as well. There's only just a little bit of breakage where these pieces are concerned, is they do separate a little bit more in space, uh, so they may be a little bit harder to think about when you're texturing. Otherwise, everything is pretty close together, and I tried to keep things pretty tightly knit so that things don't get too lost and so that there's a minimal loss of space in terms of negative areas here. And so that's how I go about the process of unwrapping and packing things, basically just focusing on the unwrap, basically removing the stretching that you have, and just blocking out the big solid shapes that you need. Then when you come to packing, just kind of packing together the large groups of objects where you can and just splitting up the other elements where you can actually start to make a little bit more space. And that's about it. So for our next part, we're going to start looking at baking out all of our different objects so that we can start dropping things into our actual game engine.